Thank you very much. Uh, thanks for coming. And a very warm welcome to all of you here at this press conference. As Nagaland goes into election, along with Tripura and Meghalaya, I think the people of Nagaland are still wondering what happened to the election for solution, which was promised in 2018. Five years have passed, and it is absolutely shameful that the ruling government, the BJP, the NDPP still want to talk about election for solution. You had an election for solution that you promised, and it has turned out to be a colossal jumla because five years after being in government, you go to people with a report card and ask them for their votes. You tell what have you done, <clears throat> and then people assess and vote for you or vote against you. But five years later, to come back to an electoral process with the same promise that you had made in 2018, it tells you about the colossal jumlas of the BJP. I will first begin about development, because the alleged double engine ki sarkar, like they keep saying, want us to believe that Nagaland has seen unprecedented development. Actually, it's to the contrary. <coughs> and you know this better than me, because some of you who belong to this place, you have to just step outside of Dimapur or the Koima, uh, Dimapur highway to see how languishing other parts of the state on development are. It ridicules the government and the BJP's claim of development. And just to clarify, maybe the BJP believes that development of the chief minister, his multiple buildings, his infrastructure, his resort, is development of the state. No, it is not. Because as far as development is concerned, Nagaland not just languishes behind many Indian states, it's one of the worst performing in the Northeast region, according to the government, government's arm, Niti Aayog's own data. And just to say a word before I move forward and you know, bust further claims of development. There was an ED case against the associates of the chief minister. Not a squeak. We do not know what happened to that case and which is why we say there's a washing machine of the BJP. You get into that washing machine, you come out squeaky clean. And that's what has happened. One doesn't know what happened to those charges. They were rampant charges of corruption. But I want to show you this picture. This is from one of your newspapers and because some of it may be competition, I'll fold it. This is a picture of the BJP president, state president, Mr. Imna Along, along with the party in charge here, Mr. Nalin Kohli. This picture and this press conference was done at the Niyathu Resort. And tall claims were made for development. Maybe the BJP wrongly believes that building of resorts for their party leaders is development. I will give you two examples. A drive from Mariani to Mokochang, which should ideally take two and a half hours, takes six hours. And because I showed you the picture <clears throat> of the BJP state president, Mr. Along here, his own constituency, his own region, his own area, from Longnak to Monglovlemba, it's a nine kilometer drive and it takes two hours because the roads are full of potholes and there's a pathetic condition of the infrastructure there. So maybe the BJP leaders need to step out of their resorts, step out of government buildings to really see how bad the infrastructure and how pathetic the condition of roads in uh, Nagaland really is. Just before we started this press conference, we had these beautiful lights on at a very low voltage though. And I was wondering if this is ornamental or is there a power supply issue? Just as was, I was wondering about that and when I sat here, all the lights went off. I got up this morning and I wanted to take a warm water bath. The geyser went on because there was no electricity. This tells you about the erratic power supply. So when the prime minister of this country lies blatantly to the people in parliament, he should be questioned on the state of power supply. He should be questioned on the state of development, on the condition of roads because allegedly some Multiple hundreds of kilometers of road is been built every day, clearly not in Nagaland. Water supply. The Prime Minister told this country, 8 crore households are getting Nal Se Jal. Direct water supply to 8 crore households. How many households in Nagaland are getting that water supply? To my horror, I was told by a colleague yesterday that in places like Kohima, people actually 
keep the wasted water from washing utensils and clothes that can be used for sanitary and, and uh, you know, other purposes. That is the condition of a state like Nagaland where peace had been promised, where prosperity had been promised, where development has been promised. Some really tall, boisterous claims can be made in parliament for all I care, but the reality on the ground is that there is no power supply. It's very erratic. And water, after 75 years of independence, Amritkal, there is no water in the taps of Nagaland. Giving one tap in a village actually disputes your claims of Nal Sejal. This development is particularly telling for the eastern part of Nagaland <clears throat> and which is why there are multiple demands that are coming up. They're all before the people of the state and they'll have to decide what they want to do with this. But the, re the reason Na eastern Nagaland has not developed is because some of the tallest BJP leaders don't come from there. The BJP leaders develop themselves, they develop their area, but they will never develop anything outside of that. And which is why one of the key promises that we are making to Eastern Nagaland is a mini secretariat in Twensang because I think that's a long standing demand. This will ensure development comes through its very multiple effects. There is a, uh, there is a spiral effect of a mini secretariat. It builds infrastructure, it gets development. One of our key promises to the people of Nagaland is to fulfill that promise. I have already spoken about the Niti Aayog report. And this is not our data, this is not data that the opposition collects, this is data that the government collects. Niti Aayog is an arm of the government and Niti Aayog has declared Nagaland one of the worst performing as far as poverty is concerned, health is concerned, well-being is concerned and infrastructure is concerned. So the multiple planes that land from here, from Delhi to make the tall claims, you just simply have to show them the Niti Aayog report and question them on the double engine claims. I want to spend just a minute before I move to my promises to talk about the youth because much like the rest of the country, Nagaland is brimming with youth, with aspirations, with hope for a better, brighter future. What they get in turn is high levels of unemployment. Every household in Nagaland has a sportsperson. There is no access to world-class sporting facilities uh, or great stadiums or for that matter good coaches. And this is something that we would really want to look into because a sporting nation or a sporting state like Nagaland, these aspirations have to be met. Our key priorities, and I'm highlighting just very few of them here, there is a manifesto that has already been launched and you've seen mostly what we are saying on various issues. But the key focus areas for us is going to be to increase the old age pension scheme to 3000 per month building of a mini secretariat in Twensang, full and timely payment of Manrega, interest-free loans for higher education, clean drinking water to every household, unlike the claims made on the ground uh, in parliament, real impact on the ground. Compulsory vocational training for the youth after their HSLC and a review of the old age pension. The reason why we are doing this is because of multiple of our states, whether it's Rajasthan, Chhattisgarh or Himachal Pradesh have fulfilled the promise. Uh, there are government servants who have served honestly and sincerely and they would want the old pension scheme to be reviewed. So for now, we are promising a review of the old pension scheme. I think the time has come from Nagaland to seek answers, to make those accountable who are in power and to give us a chance so that we can actually lay the foundation for development, we can lay the foundation for growth and most of all, we can lay the foundation which will preserve and let the culture of Nagaland bloom instead of imposing a one shade, one culture on the people of this country. So I believe the, conf uh, I believe the press conference was done at the five star Niyatu resort. So is that your achievement? Is that development for the state? I think that's a very valid question to ask. As a responsible opposition, it is our duty to raise questions. It is our duty to hold the government accountable. It is our duty to put them in the dock for the people of Nagaland and to raise allegations. And if you have done anything meaningful in the last five years, then respond to those allegations. But you cannot. You can only make empty slogans like election for solution. And five years later, you come back again and talk about election for solution. Is that your big achievement? A colossal jumla? Is your big achievement the fact that there's rampant corruption in your government? Is your big achievement the fact that 
it takes six hours to traverse a road which should take you two hours is is your big achievement the fact that people of nagaland mostly do not have clean drinking water in their pipelines what is your big achievement you've been now in government for five years it's time for you to talk about what you have done and seek votes you are instead talking about everything that doesn't matter so it is a it is a job to raise those allegations it is your duty to respond to them and sitting in nayathu resort is a good way to respond to them because that is where we see development we don't see development for the common people of nagaland i think we did i think it's unfair to say we did not but i think elections is a good time to remind people of who they elected and what have they done and assess those people so can i be blamed for raising those issues i cannot be people of nagaland repose their faith and dutifully elected a government to five years back i don't dispute that election i think people bought into what the bjp was promising them what bjp's partners were promising them there is no dispute with that five years later as a responsible opposition it is my duty to tell people this number one two three four five six ten promises were made what has happened to those ten promises i don't think anybody can reverse that fact i saw that statement and i think newspapers have widely reported on that statement i just have a counter question for the minister and for his government you come to nagaland and you make the tall claim that leaders of your parties a party have gone to convents and missionary schools very good i went to one as well and one of the best in the country if i may say so loreto but why does uh, your government in uttar pradesh or in madhya pradesh not stop or hold the goons who break the statues of our lord jesus christ why are priests attacked why are nuns attacked in karnataka where you are in government how can people break the statue of jesus christ on christmas day in madhya pradesh and get away with it minorities including christian minorities are attacked all over the country the bjp doesn't say a word on it when you come to nagaland you want to tell people that we went to missionary schools those missionary schools taught you some very good things and one of the things was to maintain peace to have brotherhood to have bonhomie so it's good for you to come here and say that we are very glad that some of them went to missionary schools they clearly did not learn a thing there because if they did they would be striving for peace they would be striving for born homie they would be striving for brotherhood they would strive to you know to share and to care that clearly doesn't happen so it's very good they went to those schools they learned nothing and it is very hypocritical of you to come here and make those claims but in governments and in states where you are in power why do christian minorities suffer what are the consequences that somebody faces when he breaks the statue of jesus christ in madhya pradesh or in uttar pradesh zilch none i come from those states so i think the bjp should you know you can't you can't say something in nagaland and do exactly the opposite in a state where you are in power at least walk the talk at least at least practice what you're preaching i think the people of nagaland are a educated bunch they understand what the bjp promised they understand the tall claims being made this time around i also think this annihilation this attack on culture of minorities of tribals of dalits is a very it's a very concerted effort to paint this country with one ideology one color one norm but i think india is a beautiful bouquet with such diversity i am fairly confident that we have i think our people are working hard in this election i think we've <laughs> the fact that the bjp has had to do a press conference to say that we are doing press conferences means that we are raising issues and responsible journalists like you are perhaps taking them to the ground level the fact that the bjp has had to talk about nal se jal is because we are raising those concerns the fact that they are talking about the alleged quote and quote achievements is because we know that there are no, there the road is infested with potholes so i think we i think we are taking the issues to the people but ultimately it is for the people to decide and quite frankly it is the people who are suffering in this room so let us not be little the intelligence or the capability of the people to judge who they voted for and what have they achieved or done